okay, we're given a problem where we hypothetically have 500 NBA players and X is the height, okay? And we're looking at the distribution of the variable X, the random variable X, which represents height of basketball players. <coughs> so we say that the mean, I say X bar equals 78 inches, uh, really the problem is stated, the mean height is 78 inches, so X bar is 78 inches. Uh, standard deviation is given as 3 inches. And we ask a couple of questions. How many are more than 84 inches high? How many less than 72 inches high? And uh, who, how tall is the tallest? How tall is the shortest? Well, we first construct our picture of the normal curve using z values from negative 2 to 2. And I did comment that um, you also kind of want to be sure that somewhere out around z equals 3, this thing gets very close to the x-axis. And after that, it's pretty much so close that it kind of blends in with the uh, z-axis in this case, but it's also an x-axis, okay? Uh, so some of you have the thing, you know, uh, it's supposed to be one-eighth of the central height here. Some of you had it way up here. It's supposed to be 60% of the central height here. Some people had it way up here. So you had kind of a fat normal curve that then kind of dived into the axis. Uh, and others had a normal curve that comes down here but then kind of levels off out here where it's a, clear, clearly above the x-axis and it just kind of stays above the x-axis. It never gets all that close to the x-axis. So if you want a good representative curve, uh, you want to do those things, and you want to think about how that represents the areas that you see on the z-table. So you want a relatively accurate curve that allows you to make reasonable estimates. Um, and if your curve is too high here, you know, the, the, the region corresponding to uh, z values greater than 2 is going to be a lot bigger than it should be. Now, when I drew this, I think this one's a little smaller than it should be. I think this one might be about right, but uh, if anything, my regions are a little too small. Um, so, you, you know, you're not going to be 100% accurate when you draw these, but do your best and keep thinking about uh, how, how to draw this curve. Um, okay, well, having labeled the Z values, we label the X values. The mean X value is 78. 78 inches, that goes with z equals zero. And then standard deviation is three inches, so if we move over one z value, that means we got to move over three units in the x direction, corresponding to three inches of height. So for every z value, we move over three, and I think everybody is pretty clear on how we do this. We've done it a number of times, uh, many times in class, and you should be doing this when you see the problems in your text that relate to z values and x values and so forth. Okay, well, uh, people tell me that, well, about 2% are more than 84 inches because that's fairly obvious. Uh, we kind of know that uh, from, two, from z equals 2 onward, we have about 2% of the curve. That's just kind of something we kind of know, but, but you know, we want to be able to see how that comes from the z-table and make an accurate determination of what that percent is. Um, now this being a normal curve model of heights of 500 players, uh, when the normal curve probably doesn't do a real good job of modeling NBA players anyway, uh, there's going to be some uncertainty and 2% might be good enough. Um, but we need to know how to use the table to get the accurate result anyway, so we're going to do that. Okay, well. We see that 84 inches just happens to correspond to z equals 2, so if we want to know how many <coughs> are greater than 84 inches, it's going to be the number out past z equals 2. <coughs> Similarly, 72 inches, uh, less than 72 inches, would correspond to the area to the left of 72, which is the same as the area to the left of z equals negative 2. Using our knowledge that about 2% go out beyond z equals 2. Uh, we say, okay, well about 2% are higher than 84 inches, so about 2% of 500, which is 10, are over 84 inches. And we would come up with the same number for under 72 inches. Um, 
Now, if we want to get a little more rigorous about it, and we need to be able to do that when the problem calls for it. Uh, from the Z table, we see that 84 inches is Z equals 2. <coughs> now, we could calculate that from the middle, which is 78 inches, out to 84 inches. That's the difference of 6 inches. So 84 minus 78 is 6, corresponding to 6 inches between here and here. So 84 is 6 greater than the mean. I say 6 above the mean, getting a little vernacular on you there. Uh, but, okay, if you're 6 above the mean, how many standard deviations are you above the mean? Well, the standard deviation is 3 inches. So 6 inches is clearly 2 standard deviations. Now, if you don't have nice whole numbers that you can think about clearly, you see that if you divide 6 by 3, if you divide how far you are from the middle by the standard deviation, you get the number of standard deviations. 6 divided by 3 is 2. So while it's probably very clear to us that if we go 6 units here, since the standard deviation is 3 units, that that's 2 standard deviations. And of course we already knew that when we labeled our curve. Um, but this is how you would ordinarily calculate it. How far is whatever number you're looking for from the middle? Divide that by the standard deviation. That tells you how many standard deviations you are from the middle, and that's your z value. <coughs> and you should be able to think through that if possible. You don't want to just rely on a formula that you're likely to forget just when you need it. And if you don't really understand the formula, you could even if you don't forget it, you could get something wrong and not realize it. You want to have an intuitive understanding of what these things mean. Okay, well anyhow, uh, this is how you would calculate that 84 inches is at z equals 2. 6 inches from here to here, divide that by the standard deviation, it's 2. 2 from the two standard deviations from the middle is at z equals 2. Okay, well the table for z equals 2 gives us 0.477. What does the table tell us? You always have to keep in mind that the table gives us the area between the middle and a given z value. So between the middle and z equals 2, we have 0.477, or if you wish, 47.7% of the total area. Now, from the middle on to forever, you have half of the area because, of course, the middle divides the curve evenly in half, the curve being completely symmetric. So if you subtract the 0.477 from 0.5, which is a half, you get 0 0.023. So you have 0 0.023 of the area from here to here. Now that rounds off to 2%, but if you want to get a more accurate calculation, more accurate prediction, or prediction somewhat more likely to be accurate, uh, you're going to use the 0.023, which is the same as 2.3%, of course. Close to our 2% that we used here, but not the same. So if we want to refine our calculation and use the 0.023 or the 2.3%, then accurate use of the model, <coughs> at least accurate out to uh, two significant figures, is going to be 0.023 times 500, or 11.5 players over 84 inches. Now that compares pretty favorably with the 10, but this is going to be a little more accurate. And of course, you can't have half a player, so you've got to round this off to the nearest whole number of players. Um, and you're going to get 12. Another way of interpreting that, and if you understand this, fine. If not, don't worry about it. Uh, this kind of tells us there's a 50-50 chance of getting 11 or 12. But you, you have uncertainties in, in any real-world situation, so you're just going to say, okay, our best guess is 12. <coughs> We're not going to be surprised if there are 8. We're not going to be surprised if there are 15. But uh, our best expectation is that there will be 12 players. Okay, now we want to talk about what we have to do to figure out how tall the tallest player is, which is a little trickier.